Over the past two months, I've tried to develop the most accurate and robust encoder that uses optical references and provides an absolute position. I've tried photo transistors, encoder disks with holes, and pulling everything together with analog circuitry. But what's the next step to increase the encoder's performance? Make it simpler. This is probably the simplest type of encoder. Since it only requires the small magnet as a reference and a single chip on the PCB to read out the magnet's position. But since I am on the journey of building an optical encoder, which is immune to stray magnetic fields and works in high acceleration environments, this is not the solution. I will therefore try to decrease the complexity of the current design. Let's start with the encoder disk. I previously used this PCB with drilled holes. This probably was a nightmare to machine for the PCB manufacturer. Additionally, the 0.5 diameter holes did not have a clean edge and therefore caused issues with the edge detection thresholds in the Schmidt trigger setup. I therefore decided to replace this disk by a FR4 PCB with copper patches on it. Since FR4 is close to transparent for infrared light, using this in combination with infrared LEDs and photodiodes, it might be a great trade-off between ease of manufacturing tolerances and complexity. Additionally, I introduce gray code. This does add a bit of complexity on the software side of things, but greatly reduces the need for hardware working 100% of the time. Let's take a look at why this is the case. For gray code, the binary output of measuring the current position of the encoder disk only changes one bit at a time. Therefore, we can implement a simple error correction mechanism based on a state machine implemented in software. Let's take a look at this 2-bit example. The 2-bit encoder can represent four positions in total, 00, 01, 11 and 10, by implementing a state machine which only transitions to a new state when the correct bit changes, noise and misdetections on the signal lines can be tolerated to a larger extent. Since the ideas are clear now, let's get to the implementation of the new encoder disk. Additionally, I implemented the changes from the last video in the encoder series. I recommend you go watch it after this video if you missed out on it. First, I needed to draw the gray code pattern in CAD. Here, the dimensions were matched to the array of 8 0805 photodiodes. This is then exported as an DXF and imported into the PCB design tool. Here, it is important to select the correct width of the lines and disable the round trace caps. Otherwise, we will get similar issues as we had with the machined holes in the encoder disk. Then, we just simply grab this design from the monitor and screw it onto the mechanical encoder shaft. Now the fun part begins, testing and debugging the errors. For the first tests, I only assembled four of the eight signal processing front ends since my oscilloscope can't display more channels at the same time anyways. These are then connected to a breadboard with an Arduino for power and to the probes for measurement through the jumper cables. Initially, everything looked fine for the first two channels measured, but after taking a second look, I realized that both of the first two channels have a 50% copper circle. Therefore, one signal line does not read correctly. This was caused by the diffused infrared light in the FR4, so we got crosstalk from other channels. As a fix, the reference resistors for the signal processing part were updated. I straight away did this for all four channels and took them back up to the oscilloscope. Here's where you can see the beauty of a working design. With this implementation, we get four cleanly separated channels displayed on the oscilloscope. Let's spin them up to speed. After attaching everything to the Arduino, we get the first result. When I spin the encoder, we get an output altering between 15 and 0, which encodes the entire rotation. Here we also see why the state machine is necessary. So let's give the state machine a try. Some lines of code later, and hooking the channels up to the Arduino, we have a first version of the encoder working with 4-bit resolution and a digital interface including all signal processing required. 
If you want to see the 8-channel version, including proper mechanical integration, stick around this channel. Also, please leave a comment with your use case for this project. And don't forget to check out the entire series to see how everything was developed and put together.